Tony, what are you doing here? Oh, I am just helping out with your son. I was feeding Ziggy, my nephew. I brought him some food. Helping, he's my child, Inny. What gives you the right to visit us for the first time and start feeding my child secretly in this room? Well, he's going to inherit the family estate next, isn't he? So, we must all take great care of him. I fear that he might get malnourished here since you guys can hardly afford to eat twice a day. If anything happens to my son, I will hold you accountable. I will report you to the police. It will be your word against mine. How dare you insinuate that? You're here to hurt my son. Your son is next in line after his father, isn't he? Also, in a court of law, you can't prove that I fed him, right? Just stating the facts. You're trying to manipulate him and use him for your own gain. How dare you accuse me of such things? I'm family. Family doesn't scheme against each other. Well, maybe it's time someone realized their place. I won't let your family stand in the way. You won't get a penny from my son or my husband. We won't allow you to usurp our inheritance. We'll see about that. I'm not just the fourth child. I'll inherit everything and kick everyone else out. Get out of my house, Innie. You're causing more harm than good. This is not over, Carolina. I'll avenge this humiliation. Also, I didn't come here to see you. The only person who can force me out of this thing you call a house is my brother, not you. You are nothing to me. You hear me. Now move out of my way, you gold digger. Leave my home and never return. You're still unmarried and busy causing trouble. Stay away from my family. Stay away from my marriage. Well, well, Barkley, it seems you've fallen quite far from the family tree. Enjoying your new humble abode. We're managing, Inny. No need for your concern. Managing. Living like this must be quite the change from our family estate. Change is a part of life. Here are a few bags of groceries. We thought you might need a little help. It's the least we can do for our dear brother. We appreciate the gesture, but we're handling things on our own. We don't need your charity. Charity? Oh, Carolina, we're just trying to be supportive family members. No need to be so defensive. We know your games, Inny. We won't be pawns in your little schemes. You dare refuse our help. We're family. True family shows respect and honor, not just when it suits their agenda. Seems like someone has forgotten their place. Our place is where we make it, not where you try to force us. should be careful, Carolina. We're not to be trifled with. We'll stand our ground, no matter what games you play. Father, I've got something important to tell you all. Carolina has been plotting against us. She's after our family estate, and I'm certain she's a witch. I even doubt Ziggy is Barkley's son. Watch. Any, let's not jump to conclusions. There are always two sides to a story. Dad, you need to command Barkley to divorce her immediately for her disrespect towards me and her witchcraft. Now, Any, let's not be hasty. Meddling in your brother's life isn't your place. What? Are you taking her side, mother? I'm not taking sides, Inny. I'm saying we should consider both perspectives. Carolina is trying to take everything from us. Inny, stop. Now, what exactly did Carolina say to you? She insulted me, accused me of meddling, and questioned my presence there. Is it not true that you're often involved in your brother's affairs? That's not the point, and she said I should be married by now. Well, isn't it true? All your sisters, including Eerie, are married. How can you defend her, mother? 
I'm not defending anyone, any. I'm simply reminding you that there are different perspectives. Stop stirring up trouble in the family. From now on, you're my arch enemy, mother. You've always favored Carolina. Any, I won't play into your games. We're a family, and we should resolve our issues without creating more strife. Any, Vittorio, I mean your mother Vittorio, is right. She's older and wiser than you. Please listen to her. Also, there's no need for you to overreact. Calm down, dear. Carolina has humiliated you, Innie. You must seek revenge at any cost. I know, I won't let her get away with this. You need to control your parents, make sure no one lays claim to the estate. I've got Dad, Erie and the rest of my siblings under my influence, but Mother is a genuine believer. She's challenging. You must find a way to control her as well. Make them all fear you. I need a foolproof plan. Barkley and his family must disappear or be under my control permanently. Use whatever means necessary. Witchcraft could be your ultimate weapon. Witchcraft is a last resort. I need to exhaust other options first. For example, I can start some malicious gossip against Carolina and since I studied biochemistry, pharmaceuticals and so forth, I know a lot about chemicals, drugs and their interactions. Time is running out. Ensure your family is under your dominion. I'll make them all regret underestimating me. Revenge will be sweet. A few years later. Praise God. Mother, we've just bought a new house in the suburbs. It's a great step for our family. Congratulations, son. I am very happy for you and Carolina. Oh, so this is where you've settled down. Well, it's not exactly the best neighborhood, is it? It's our home, Innie. We're happy with it. Well, it's not exactly affluent, is it? Did you consider the quality of the area? We love it here. It's perfect for us. Perfect for you, maybe. But I'm sure the family expected more from the eldest son. We're proud of what we've achieved. It's a blessing. Blessing or not, it's not what I would have chosen. At least we aren't still living at home like some people I know. Thank you for having us kicked out of the estate. It was a blessing in disguise. Later, during the church service on the weekend. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your blessings and guidance. Amen. During the week, gossiping with others. Did you see Barclay's new house? It's in such a mediocre area. I can't believe they settled for that. Also, I don't think that Ziggy and Jarissa are Barclay's children. I don't trust Carolina. She's too clever for my liking. I think you're right, my friend. Barclay should have married me instead of that foreigner. But didn't you just thank God for blessings over the weekend? Oh, in church, we use one language. In real life, I call it as I see it. That doesn't sound very Christian-like. I'm just keeping it real. People need to know the truth. Barkley, you arrived home late again. The kids and I were worried about you, and your phone was out of reach. I can come and go as I please. I don't report to anyone and especially not to you. Barkley, you're no longer considerate of my feelings. You've changed so much. If you must know where I was, I will tell you. I went out with a few friends of mine. On my way home, I got a call from Innie and Erie. They insisted that I met them at the house. At this hour, Barkley. What are you insinuating? If you don't believe me then go ahead and call Innie and Erie. Mom and Dad weren't at home so they won't be able to confirm anything. However, if I ever find out that you are spying on me, I will immediately end this marriage because there's no point in staying married to someone who doesn't trust me. Stop overreacting, Barkley. Ever since you started hanging around those sisters of yours, you've changed for the worst. You will respect my sister's woman, do you hear me? 
My sisters were right, I should have married a more learned and sophisticated woman a woman with class. Not someone who is desperate for attention and who doesn't know her place in this family. Mom in law, I need to talk to you about Barkley. Lately, he's been acting strange, and it's affecting our family. What's been happening, Carolina? Barkley has been fighting with me over trivial matters, and every time he turns to Innie and Irie for advice, things only get worse. It's like he's a different person, and he can't make a decision without consulting them. That's not like Barkley. I'll talk to him and see what's going on. Barkley, your wife is concerned about your recent behavior. What's happening? It's nothing, Mom. Just some disagreements at home. Barkley, you need to talk to Carolina. You can't let these issues fester. It's just that Innie and Erie give good advice, Mom. They understand things. Your wife is your partner, Barkley. You need to make decisions together. Don't let anyone come between you two. Maybe you're right, Mom. I'll talk to Carolina and try to work things out. Carolina, so you went to report me to my mother. How dare you do that, Carolina? Let this be the first and last time you do such a thing. I... I... That's enough. Any. Eerie, how many times have I told you not to interfere in your brother's marriage? What gives you the right to meddle in his affairs? We were just giving advice, Mom. Advice. Look at your own lives before giving advice. Eerie, your marriage is falling apart. Your college professor of a husband cheated on you with numerous college students, and you've been unfaithful as well. The laughing stock of his university. It's not that simple, Mom. And Innie, you fell pregnant outside of marriage with a married man. You brought shame to this family. Ahem. <coughs> I made a mistake, Mom. I thought the man would leave his wife for me. You both judged Barkley and Carolina for having a child out of wedlock, but at least they did the honorable thing and got married, and they never cheated on each other. We didn't think about that, Mom. You preach about preserving the family's honor and having prestige, yet you committed shameful acts. Your father and I were forced to step down as church elders because of your scandals. Mom, we didn't mean for it to go this far. Put your houses in order first before trying to fix someone else's. Stop being so prideful and judgmental. You've brought disgrace to our family. It is written in Matthew 7, 1 to 5 ESV, Judge not, that you be not judged. For with the judgment you pronounce you will be judged, and with the measure you use it will be measured to you. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when there is the log in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. What should we do, Mom? Reflect on your actions, seek forgiveness, and mend your own lives. And most importantly, stay out of your brother's marriage. You have no right to interfere. Mom, you can't blame us for everything that's happened. Innie, it's not about blame. It's about facing the consequences of our actions. Well, I won't let you put all of this on me and Erie. It's not fair. Ahem. <coughs> it's not about fairness, Innie. It's about accepting responsibility. Mom, we never wanted any of this to happen. I know, my dear. But actions have consequences. Ahem. <coughs> Please permit me to take a break and find solace. The constant conflicts, mistreatment of all family members that refuse to bow down to you too, and the embarrassment caused by both of you have begun to impact my well-being. As a senior and highly respected church elder, I now face ridicule from the women's society, my enemies and from the church at large, my health is now suffering. I lack peace of mind and live in constant fear of the turmoil you two consistently create. 
Any. We need to change our ways. I am weary of the pervasive negativity, including hatred, envy, jealousy, gossip, malice, wickedness, manipulation, and strife within our family. Constant stress is not good. All of these factors have adversely affected my health. Mother, you can't blame us for everything that's going wrong in your life. Also, we can't help it if we have domineering and powerful personalities. If we are like this, it's because you brought up strong women. And I will never be ashamed of that. Also, I will never step down from any fight. So, you are putting all of the blame on me. You must learn to choose your battles and focus on doing good. Follow the Lord Jesus Christ and seek to glorify him in all you do. There's no point in trying to reason with a narcissist, is there? You need more than just prayers. The two of you need to seek forgiveness, deliverance and counseling. A short while later, Vittorio passes away. No, mom, this can't be happening. It's like everything is falling apart. I'm so sorry for your loss. We did everything we could. No, no, no. This can't be happening. The family is left to grapple with the grief and the consequences of their actions. A few months later. Carolina, I can't take this anymore. I am tired of this marriage. Leave the house. Barkley, what's gotten into you? We can work through this. You are aware that half of everything you own belongs to me so you can't kick me out of the house just like that. No, I won't live with you any longer. Leave. Finally, Barkley, it's time you stand up for yourself. Maybe now things will go back to normal. What are these women doing in our bedroom? They should respect our boundaries. Why do they feel the need to interfere in everything? Leave my sisters alone. I invited them here. I said get out of here now. I must be very powerful because it's three against one. So you called the children of Belial, your devious sisters, to help you fight with me. How dare you call my sisters that? Out, out. I want you out of my life but you will leave the children with me. I won't leave my home, Barkley. We're a family, and we can't let this tear us apart. If you don't leave willingly, I'll make you leave. I will never leave my children. I earn a lot more than you ever will hence. Ziggy and Jerissa will be brought up by me. You must return to your home country. Your country recently gained independence hence. There's no need for you to stay here. Get out. Why have you suddenly changed? I blame your sisters. I am sure they have something to do with it. Carolina, or whatever your name is, you used witchcraft to kill our mother. You want to take over the estate. What? That's absurd. We bought our own home. Why would I do that? Oh, the innocent act. We know what you're up to. Please. I loved your mother. I would never do anything to harm her. We don't believe you. You're just after the money. Please, listen to me. I would never hurt anyone. I loved Vittorio like my own mother. You're lying. Get out. She's deceiving all of you. She wants everything for herself. Which? We can't let her destroy our family. I can't believe this. I won't leave my family. Please, Barkley, Innie, Irie, listen to reason. Despite these circumstances, Carolina didn't wholeheartedly seek the Lord. She believed she could manage on her own, relying on advice from her mother and friends, and placing faith in Barkley's potential return to the loving man she initially fell for. 
Unfortunately, her faith was misguided, as we are called to place our faith solely in God, not in people, faith itself, our abilities, or self. This misdirected trust would later prove to be quite costly for Carolina. Mark 11:22 KJV says, And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. 1 Corinthians 2, 5 says, That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. No one listened to Carolana instead, they all started plotting her downfall, and the family was torn apart under the influence of any, iry and malevolent spirits. Oh, Barkley, it's been too long. How's everything at home? Things are fine, Innie. Carolana and the kids are doing well. How are your twins doing? That's wonderful to hear. You know, family is so important. Everyone is doing well. I wonder what she's up to this time around. I wonder what sort of drama will take place at today's family function. Carolina and the kids will be arriving at the campsite later in the day, I am sure the drama will start then. I brought some dishes for everyone. I hope you enjoy them. Oh, how thoughtful of you. But I think we should stick to the dishes my chefs and I prepared. You understand, right? You can take back all of this food, that is, if you don't want us to feed it to the dogs and wild animals. I will pretend I didn't hear that. Pam, you see that woman dressed in pink. She's Barclay's wife, Carolina. I heard she's a witch. Be careful with her food. What? I don't believe all of those rumors. My child, there's no smoke without fire. Later, at the function. Timmy, why is everyone avoiding the food I brought? Innie said we shouldn't eat anything you prepare. It's better to be safe. What? Why would she say that? At home, Barkley confronts Carolina. Barkley, what is the meaning of this? I heard you're trying to poison us. What's wrong with you? Barkley, I would never do that. Why would you believe such a thing? Innie said you're a witch. Maybe she's right. Mom suffered after you came into the family. Barkley, I loved your mother. I would never harm her. I can't trust you anymore. Just stay away. These are false accusations. What evidence does Innie have to support her claims? I don't require any evidence. My mother's sudden passing is all the evidence I need. You're being unreasonable, Barkley. Carolana, isolated and hurt, tries to defend herself, but the family continues to shun her, calling her a witch. Any psychological games take a toll on Carolana's relationships. Carolana, is this you? Yes, it's me, my friend. As the insidious web of gossip and accusations entwined the fabric of the family, Carolana found herself ensnared in a cage of fear and isolation. The relentless whispers of witchcraft and malevolence wore down her spirit, casting a pall of despair over her once vibrant demeanor. Each accusatory glance, every hushed conversation, became a venomous arrow that pierced her fragile sense of belonging. Carolina, you can't let their words define you. They're trying to break you, but you're stronger than this. I don't know how much longer I can endure this. Barkley, my own husband, seems like a stranger now. It's like his love and trust evaporated overnight. You can't lose hope, Carolina. This storm will pass. Sometimes, people are blinded by falsehoods, but the truth has a way of revealing itself. Don't let their words extinguish your light. It was heartbreaking to witness Carolina's transformation. She used to be so full of life, but the relentless rumors turned her vibrant spirit into a flickering flame. Barkley, once her pillar of support, became a puppet dancing to the tunes of his manipulative sisters. The laughter and warmth that once filled their home were replaced by an icy silence, a haunting testament to the destructive power of baseless words. I'm sorry to hear that, my dear, but this is the result when one marries someone without a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. 
What do you mean? They met at church, and both have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. Dear, actions speak louder than words. True believers show the Lord's transformative power in their lives, discern spirits, and truth from lies. Unfortunately, Barclay seems influenced by his manipulative sisters. Moreover, you mentioned Carolina was pregnant on her wedding day. Starting a relationship on the wrong foot disobeys the Lord. A foundation not built on godly principles can't endure without genuine repentance and seeking the Lord. You're right, my king. King. Like Sarah called Abraham, my lord, I choose to call you, my beloved husband, my king. You're the king of our castle, the king of my heart. This mindset keeps me humble. Thank you, my queen. Let's pray for Carolina, that she finds her way to the Lord, rises above challenges, and, if necessary, has the courage to leave Barclay for a fresh start guided by God. Pray for the children to weather life's storms, especially those caused by their father and aunts. Amen. Amen. Barclay, you need to divorce Carolina. She's tearing this family apart. I won't divorce her. There's no evidence supporting your claims about mom. Evidence or not, she's a witch, Barclay. She's ruining our family. I won't abandon my wife and kids based on baseless accusations. Barkley, this is for the good of the family. You need to listen to us. I won't do it. Carolina is the mother of my children, and I won't abandon her. If you don't divorce her, I'll make sure she leaves this family one way or another. You can't bring a witch into this family and expect us to sit back and leave her to do whatever she pleases with us. Not on my watch. I think she bewitched you that is why you seem to defend her all the time nowadays. I won't let you manipulate our lives any further. Carolina stays. Barkley, you'll regret this. I can't believe it's come to this. Despite Barkley's resistance, Innie is determined to get rid of Carolina at any cost. The tension in the family continues to escalate. In the shadows of relentless family turmoil, Carolina found herself grappling with a weight that extended beyond the tangible accusations. Mental health, a topic often shrouded in stigma, became a pressing concern as the insidious effects of isolation and constant hostility began to take their toll. It's crucial to recognize the signs of mental health challenges and seek support before they become overwhelming. From a spiritual perspective, staying grounded in practices that bring solace and peace can be transformative. Engaging in prayer, meditation, or connecting with a spiritual community can provide a sense of comfort and resilience. However, it's equally important to acknowledge that spiritual well-being may need to complement professional mental health care. On the healthcare front, recognizing mental health symptoms is essential. From our research, these symptoms can include persistent feelings of sadness, anxiety, changes in sleep patterns, withdrawal from social activities, and alterations in appetite. Physical symptoms like headaches or unexplained pains can also be linked to mental health issues. Seeking professional help, whether through counseling, therapy, or psychiatric support, is a crucial step. Open communication with loved ones can foster a support system, and maintaining a healthy lifestyle with regular exercise, a balanced diet, and sufficient sleep contributes significantly to mental well-being. Remember, addressing mental health is a holistic endeavor, encompassing spiritual, emotional, and physical aspects. Seeking help is a sign of strength, and in a world where the shadows of mental health challenges persist, the light of understanding and support can make a profound difference. In the closing chapters of Carolana's tumultuous journey, we reflect not only on the fragility of mental health under the weight of baseless accusations, but also on the profound impact of external influences on our lives. Carolana's story serves as a cautionary tale about the perils of allowing negative influences to shape our perceptions, manipulate our decisions, and erode our well-being. The dangers of judgment, superiority, and meddling in the lives of others loom large in this narrative. The family's descent into turmoil was propelled by unchecked judgments, unfounded superiority, and the toxic influence of manipulative forces. 
Carolina became a victim of not only external slander, but also of the internal conflicts fueled by a family torn apart by judgment and false perceptions. In stark contrast, we find a commendable figure in Vittorio, Barclay's mother, a beacon of truth and discernment. Her willingness to stand for what is right, to call out her children when they are, underscores the importance of moral courage in the face of familial strife. Such figures serve as reminders of the need for a moral compass, a guide that transcends the muddled waters of manipulation and deceit. As we traverse the complex tapestry of human relationships, may we draw inspiration from those who stand unwavering in truth, guided by principles that foster unity rather than division. Let us guard against the allure of undue influence, recognizing the need for discernment and the wisdom to distinguish between healthy counsel and manipulative tactics. In the pursuit of understanding, compassion, and mental well-being, may we turn to the light of God's guidance. The ability to discern spirits, seek truth, and uphold righteousness is a source of strength that can anchor us in the stormy seas of life. May Carolina's journey be a catalyst for introspection, fostering resilience and fortitude against the currents of negativity that threaten to engulf our lives. Thank you for watching this episode of Carolina. Watch out for the next episode. If you haven't subscribed, we recommend doing so to get notified about new content. Before we conclude, here are some verses from the King James Version of the Holy Bible for you to ponder on. John 13 34 says, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. 1 Peter 4, 8 says, And above all things have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. 1 John 4, 7 says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and every one that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. John 13 35 says, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. Psalm 34, 18 says, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Isaiah 41, 10 says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee, be not dismayed. For I am thy God, I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Psalm 23, 4 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff they comfort me. Matthew 11, 28 to 30 says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Philippians 4, 6-7 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Isaiah 43, 2 says, When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, and not of evil, to give you an expected end. And Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. May these verses provide solace, strength, and guidance to those navigating through challenging times, just as Carolina did in her trying journey. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, the source of all comfort and the giver of every good and perfect gift, we come before you in humility and trust. In the midst of life's challenges, we seek your guidance, healing, and deliverance. Your word assures us that you are near to the brokenhearted, and we lean on your promises with faith. We lift up those who find themselves in situations akin to Carolina, where shadows of accusations and strife threaten to overwhelm. We pray for discernment to see through the lies and manipulation, and for strength to stand firm in the face of adversity. 
Lord, you are our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. We ask for your comforting presence to envelop those who are hurting. Be their fortress, their safe haven amidst the storms of life. We pray against the spirit of discord, judgment, and manipulation that seeks to tear families apart. Let your light expose the darkness, and grant wisdom to navigate through the complexities of relationships. May the love that surpasses all understanding prevail. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke every evil force that seeks to sow seeds of division and despair. Your word teaches us that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We claim this promise, trusting in your sovereignty. Grant healing to those who bear the weight of false accusations and judgment. Pour out your balm of Gilead on their wounds, and may the peace that surpasses all understanding guard their hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Father, may we be vessels of your love, standing against the tide of gossip, manipulation, and judgment. Teach us to walk in the footsteps of Christ, offering grace and compassion to those in need. As we close this chapter, we surrender the burdens at your feet, knowing that you are the ultimate healer and reconsoler. May your will be done in our lives, and may your grace abound in every situation. We pray all these things in the powerful and transformative name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you for watching. Remain blessed.